All right, good morning on a uh, Sunday at 5.50 in the morning. This is true love right here, taking my lovely triathlon wife. Look at that, beast mode, <laughs> running shoes, tri-shirt thing. This is my tri-shirt thing. Ah, she's ready to go. Mm -hmm. We're good. I'm so glad I'm not doing this triathlon. My thighs, no, no, not my thighs. My calves are super sore from my one and a half mile run yesterday. So, how long is your run? Two and a half. Yeah, that would not have happened today. Mm -mm. But I'm gonna be cheering. All right, let's go. Ready? How you feeling? I'm actually a little jittery, I'm surprised. But uh, I'm really excited. All right, game on. Because it's freezing. Where'd it go? Oh! Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
is tired from holding this camera. <laughs> All right, well, I was going to do my ask anything out here, but it is, I don't know if you can hear it in the camera, but like super duper windy out here. Uh, it is definitely somehow turned to fall all of a sudden. So um, we are doing ask anything uh, to Aaron or ask Aaron anything, um, but let's relocate because it's turned to fall out here. All right, so relocated into, hopefully it's not too echoey in here. Hmm. I gotta try that out. All right, we'll try this. Uh, should sound a little bit better, not as windy, all of the above. Uh, forgive me, I'm wearing a hat. I got a major hat here going on. All right, first of all, yes, I am in a lovely hoodie because it is cold outside, which is my favorite. All right, I'm gonna start with the questions from Facebook. I'm gonna go as fast as I can. David Palmer says, say hello to me and also go Sharks in the grand finale. All right, so David Palmer, as your weekly uh, request has started, hello. And also, go Sharks, which is a rugby team, so go Sharks, do your best or score lots of goal units or however rugby works I don't know number two Philip asks how do you get involved how did you get involved with destination imagination what is your uh, what is my current job with the association so I did Odyssey of the mind which was what destination was imagination is now so starting an Odyssey of the mind when I was in elementary school did that all through elementary school went to the world finals super super awesome Kind of lost track of it, and then um, an old teacher of mine was looking for someone to help. I said, sure, I'll do it. And then anyone that's in Destination Imagination knows, you get sucked down the whirlpool of Destination Imagination. So now I am the the regional challenge master. I am a, the head appraiser at, at state, and I'm a head appraiser at Globals. Love the program. If you have kids, highly recommend. Get them into Destination Imagination. Oh, and he also says, hashtag ask Aaron anything instead of ask me anything like that. Um, Philip also asked, do you feel that your teaching practices have improved since you started the vlog? Absolutely. Um, I think this goes with any job. Anytime there's an adult in the room or you know you're being seen, you make sure to do your very best practices, which is great for me because when I'm filming myself teaching, I'm making sure that I'm doing the best practices, which is great for me and great for the kids. So, definitely. Philip. Uh, Ranford asks again, what has surprised you most about the vlog? What has challenged you the most? So watching a lot of vlogs, I thought it was gonna be a lot easier than it's been. Um, so you'll see that I have all these shots where I'm walking towards a camera, walking away from the camera. It surprised me how much time I'm having to move the camera and do those shots. So definitely more time than I thought it was gonna be. And what has been the most challenging part? Anytime I have plans at night on the weekdays has been the most challenging part because if I go out and do things with friends at night, that either means I have to stay up really late to edit or I have to get up really early to edit. So that's been the most challenging is just for that time management. All right, Philip asks again, can you clarify your acronym? So TEKS, when I say TEKS, that's a Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills. Uh, Ronnie Valdez asks, do you have any tips on teaching a left-handed three-year-old how to write to right where both parents are right-handed. Ooh, tough one. So what I tell any parents, left or right hand, don't worry about so much the fine motor skills. When they're three and four year olds, you wanna work on those gross motor skills. Hanging on monkey bar, squeezing Play-Doh. These muscles will develop once these muscles are developed. And holding onto a handlebar, think about how much muscle that takes here. So as parents, um, I would highly encourage you to help them build all their upper body skills and then let the teacher focus on those handwriting skills. So don't jump to this if this is not ready. So Chris Choate, um, what does the phrase giving someone the cold shoulder mean and where does the phrase come from? Oh uh, man, I've been stumped. I have zero idea what that means. So um, let's ask Google. So I had to do some research on the cold shoulder and apparently there's multiple reasons. Um, it came from some literary ones and a cold shoulder could have meant the, that you, if you have a guest that you don't like, you serve them a cold shoulder of meat. So like a cut of meat, a cold shoulder is one possible outcome. Chris, you asked that question. If you have a great uh, explanation, post that one down below. I'd be interested to know what you think it is. 
And Anne Rose asked, what is the best resource for learning ASL? Ah, great question. So here's two websites I'm going to give you. Sign Savvy is one. And then um, lifeprint.com is another one. Those two websites are really good. And then a couple of vlogs ago, I showed those ASL cards. Another really good resource would be if you can find your... Um, American Sign Language group, every town has a group, they usually get coffee together or things like that, and just start learning on your own, but also go and hang out with them and do some of the coffee events, and so you can see sign language in action. All right, now we're moving on to some of the uh, questions that were submitted on YouTube. So Jill on the Hill asks, what are your feelings about teaching cursive writing to students? Should they teach it or not? Ah, this is gonna be a hard one because the teacher in me wants them to learn cursive, but the practical part of me knows that cursive is a dying art. Technology is taking over. The only time I ever use cursive is when I sign my name. So I feel like there are other things that we need to spend our time on that's not cursing. Uh, Bonnie uh, Savard asks two questions. Did you already know sign language before Tucker signing or have you just picked it up as you go? So I actually started a master's program in deaf education and then decided that I didn't want to finish it because I knew once I got that uh, master's that I would be pulled out of regular education and always be in special ed. So I really loved it when I was learning it and so I've just carried that over to my regular education classroom. And did you need permission to film in your school? I did not ask permission because I don't put any of my kids faces in the vlog. But I am going to start researching with my principal and, um, and my, my school district what would be the legalities of me using the kids' faces because I think it'd be super helpful for kids and parents and teachers and just other people to be able to see me actually teaching with the kids, not having to blur their faces or from the back. Um, did you always want to be a teacher? Did you always want to teach at elementary level? So I started college wanting to do nursing and then I didn't like biology. So I took a child psychology class just to try it out and immediately fell in love with the idea of that. So I got a job at a up, um, so I got a job in upstate New York teaching rock climbing and just really loved being with the kids. So when I got back, I got a job at a daycare and it just fit. I loved being around the kids. The kids were comfortable with me. It just, it, uh, I don't know if you've ever done something where it just immediately you know it was a piece that was missing in your life. That's how education is to me. And yes, I only want to teach the young kids. I do not want to teach the older ones. The older they get, the more attitude they get, the more it's about teaching the specifics of your lessons versus I get to teach them how to be learners and how to be people and how to share and how to just be a good person. So. I really love the early childhood years. Room for a Pony One asks, I'm curious about Art Canyon. Is a quick overview appropriate? Yeah. So my dad and his wife bought Art Canyon many years ago. They have just used it to build that house that you've seen in some of the other vlogs out there. So it's kind of like a vacation home, except that it's still in Lubbock, which is awesome because it doesn't take that long to get there. Uh, room for a Pony One. If you have any other questions, let me know. I'd be glad to go in a little bit more detail about Art Canyon with you. And Michelle asks, how long have you been teaching? So this is my 11th year teaching kindergarten, and then before that I did four or five years in a daycare. Those were some really great questions. Thanks for participating. I really have enjoyed this Ask Aaron Anything. Uh, I'd like to keep this going on a weekly basis. Let me know down below if this is something that you find interesting or that it's helpful when I answer your questions. And as always, if you like my stuff, if you like what I'm doing, please hit that subscribe button and please hit that like button and share away with your friends because the more followers I get, the more encouraged I am to keep doing this so that I can share some of the stuff I'm doing with you guys and it gives me a creative outlet, which is really good for me. So thanks for tuning in. See you tomorrow.